Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to the Be Connected session. I'm with you as always. I'm your host, Emily. I work at the City of Marion Libraries. Today, we're going beyond the map with Google Earth. We're going to explore Google Earth, why it's so much fun to use. This is definitely a fun episode, session, webinar today. So let's get started with all of that jazz. Today, we're going to start off with the Be Connected website, as I do every week. We'll ask, what is Google Earth? We'll look at how to navigate it, how to use it, how to get the most out of it, how to have fun with it, essentially. And then we'll jump onto Google Arts and Culture, a brilliant um, extra website that is made by Google, totally not for profit. Um, and it's just a way to get you into the arts museums while we can't go out anywhere really or travel. Um, it has a lot going on, much more than first meets the eye and I'll, we'll get into that in a little bit. And then we'll have questions at the end. So please pop them in the chat if you have any questions at the end and I'll answer them there. Let's get started. So Be Connected. Be Connected is an Australian government initiative to get everyone online. Um, so if you want to jump online, they've got some brilliant courses. I'll show you briefly as I do each week. I'll bring it up on my screen. Well, I've got Google Earth there. Here we go. Be connected. So this is a way just to get everyone online comfortable with their technology, technological skills. Yes. <laughs> and get everyone, you know, able to use the internet effectively and not feel like they're missing out. So they start off in the topic area from the very basics, like what is a keyboard, what is a computer, how to use everything there, jumping on the internet, internet safety, and then more online skills from beyond that. And today we're doing something a bit more than, um, than just starting out and just the basics. So this should be a lot of fun for us. Let me jump back to our PowerPoint. Here we go. <laughs> it says Be Connected. Please jump on if you have any more questions about Be Connected. It's great. So what is Google Earth? Google Earth is a virtual map that renders a 3D Earth um, using satellite imagery as well as street photos, so photos from street level, um, satellite imaging, um, internal photos taken by companies or buildings that want to show off their, um, maybe something like tourism, show off their um, their wares. We definitely have one here at the Hallett Cove Library, the Cove Civic Center. We had a 3D camera come in and we took photos so you can actually explore the library virtually. There's no one in there in the pictures, so it kind of feels a bit, uh, a bit like a ghost town, but it's quite a cool place to explore. So we'll look at that when we go on to Google Earth in a bit. Um, it's captured 98% of the world so far. Um, I don't know what the other 2% could be. Maybe it's something like um, unauthorized access to military base images or something like that. I don't know. It could just be that it's a big planet and they've only got about 98% scans so far. <laughs> but it does feel whole and complete when you're exploring it. So I don't mind that last 2% being, you know, hidden away or not taking pictures of yet. Um, and it's accessible from a Chrome browser or as an app for Apple and Android devices. So jumping on a laptop or computer using Chrome is the way to go. Um, I prefer it that way as well, but it is a lot of fun using it on a tablet device like so. I've got it on my iPad here today. Um, you can also get it on any other phone or tablet device that can download the app from the App Store or the Google Play Store. So that's that. So let's look at some navigation basics before we jump onto the website. Um, first, uh, you can find anything by searching it generally with um, as long as you've got the correct name, spelling, address, things like that, you'll know. Um, here we have a little magnifying glass as a general search term. So you can search for things like countries, addresses, landmarks, buildings, notable places, parks, things like that. Um, you can navigate the world by swiping or clicking and dragging or using a plus and minus symbol, which I'll explore on both the computer and on our tablet here today. So you can get both ideas of, you know, which you may like to use more. Um, jumping into street view, this little person indicates street view, meaning you're going to be viewing it from the person level as if you were standing in the place itself. It's very, very cool. So we'll explore uh, um, street view in just a moment and spin the globe just to see where you end up. A lot of fun. There's a few extra features there. Um, there's a lot to see on Google Earth. So let me jump over to my Google Earth page I have ready. Just here. There we go. This is the globe. Voila. Now I'm going to click and drag just to show you how to move about. And you'll notice even the star systems in the background move because I believe those are accurate to the location as well. If you are a stargazer, let me know. Otherwise, <laughs> I'm just going to assume that um, in the background we've got stars. That makes sense. Beautiful. Um, I don't know if I've got current weather turned on, but I will check that out in a second. So what you can see is as I approach the Earth, the clouds will part. They'll disappear in order to view the country or planet or you know 
state wherever you're traveling um, in clearer detail. Here I've got general names of, you know, neighboring seas, surrounding oceans, um, and then in big bold we've got country names to make things easy to traverse. So clicking and dragging is how I'm getting through and then I'm just scrolling as if you would um, move up and down a web page to zoom. You can also use this plus and minus symbol in the bottom right hand corner to approach and drag back. And then you've got this little navigational globe, which will tell you where you are in the general scheme of things. And you can travel this way like so. And it will move you where you want to go that way as well. So if you aren't super, where am I going? So close. If you aren't super um, dexterous with your fingers or have a harder time using a mouse, you can click and drag this globe like so, and you'll be able to travel where that little arrow takes you. Let's go. Woohoo. Past Papua New Guinea. Alrighty. Where is this? <laughs> All right, doesn't tell me. Oh, oh, we're by Palau. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm so sorry. Um, very cool. All right, clicking and dragging. You'll get the general idea of bodies of water as well, as well as depth by color for the most part. So you've got the a great Australian bite here. And we've got the very deep ocean and then some shallower ocean. Although shallow ocean doesn't mean much to us, does it? Because it's all very deep. <laughs> okay, so clicking and dragging to move around the globe. If you ever find that you get a bit twisted or if you've zoomed in and you've moved around too much, you're not sure where, we, where you are, you're always welcome to either just hit minus, minus, minus to zoom all the way out or hit the northern compass just to orientate you correctly. I'm just going to click all the way out again. There we go. And you can go so far back that you become just a very, very, very small globe. It's very pretty from this far. My goodness. What a pretty earth we live on. And zooming back in. Beautiful. So next thing we want to try is navigation. Let's try and find somewhere. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to hit search. And let's do the Cove Civic Center. And I may have to put in state as well. Aha, uh -huh, it knows where I am. So here we go. Uh, voila. If I click there, it'll zoom us in and we'll even try and give us some information. These are called, I forget what these are called. These have a very specific name. Anyway, they're information cards that are designed to add extra information about a location, depending on how popular, how famous it is. So if we were to go to somewhere like Paris, you'd get the Eiffel Tower and it'd have a lot, large um, sort of fact list about that location. So Cove Civic Center, there we are. We've got a nice little uh, <laughs> revolving view here. Um, next thing I'd like to show you is Street View. Street View can be quite exciting, especially if you're visiting somewhere that you've not been in a long time or have never been to. Um, we're not going to get that exciting. We're going to go somewhere most of you have been. We're going to go to the Cove Civic Center. So just to stop the spinning, when I click and I'm going to zoom in from this angle. Look at all our solar panels. Very good. Uh, and what we're going to do, we're going to click and drag this little person. Actually, I may even do it from a bit higher so you can get an idea. This little person, you can either click Street View and then all the lines will turn on. The lines that are blue indicate that there has been images taken along that track. So here we've got Ragamuffin Drive here and all in blue means that there has been a car with a 3D bubble on top taking pictures and it's gone through and taken images for us. Um, all these little singular dots mean that someone's taken a picture while either in a building or at a landmark or just out exploring. For some reason down here we've got Oh, they're still there. Okay. They maybe just weren't meant to be there. Very odd. Um, but here we have the Coast Civic Center. And we do indeed have quite a few photos that were taken um, in the past. It's nothing super recent. There are a few things that have changed since the last time we took these pictures. So what you can do, you can either click on the blue line or the blue dot, depending where you'd like to go. Or you can click and drag this little person. And then once you release it, it'll drop them into that location and we'll travel into their perspective. So here we go. This is Ragamuffin Drive. Our trees are looking very small here. This is obviously some years ago now. And definitely summer. This is hot weather. Everything is brown <laughs> and clear sky. It's quite lovely. So this is 2017. I can see here if you zoom in. Oh, it's gone. There it is. You should be able to see a um, copyright time of what year it was taken by Google. So we've got this is copyright 2017. So three years ago now. It does look like three years ago. Trees grow very quickly in three years. Very exciting. And what I want to do now, you can either travel up and down the road by clicking these arrows, take you side on. 
But I would like to do, I want to go into this. Oh, actually, can you see the car that took the picture? That's quite cool. Yeah, it's got a camera mounted on top. You may not be able to see it on your end, um, but this is a car with a camera on top. Very cool. So what I want to do, I want to get into the building. So either I'll try double tapping, may not work. That's fair. Um, I'll jump back into Street View and actually click on one of the dots. I think we'll do that. Ta -da. Okay, let's jump here to the first dot. I'd say that's about as close as you can get to the entryway. Let's go. I love the little full flying animation. It's so cute. Here we go. So this is the Cove Civic Center. It was taken early in the morning. I can tell by the kind of lighting we have, maybe even in winter time. Let's see, what time was it? Oh yeah, not even nine o'clock yet. So taken very early in the morning before we're opened. We've opened. And if you click the arrows now, you'll be able to walk about the space and have an explore. So you can see this is definitely taken by a 3D camera because you can explore it in a 3D space, meaning you can turn your image around and there'll be image all around. It won't just finish as a normal picture does. This has edges. <laughs> it's all the way around. Here we go, doors are open. This is before we even had our windbreak. This is before we updated several things, moving things around. Very cool. It is cool to go back in time sometimes and have a look and see what's changed. So that's us. You can travel again, forward, backward, however you like, up to the concierge desk if you'd like. Hello. Hello. And I'm just clicking through these arrows to navigate. Very cool. So that's the Cove Civic Center. That's us. Very fun to explore. So you're always welcome to jump on to Google Earth and explore. Let me just go back here our libraries virtually as well. So that's us. The next thing I want to show you is Google Voyager. Voyager meaning um, going on a voyage. It has this wheel symbol, ship's wheel. I'm going to call it a ship's wheel, the helm maybe. Let's click on the wheel symbol and it'll open up Voyager. Voyager is sort of like a program within Google Earth that aims to have you travel and explore through all of the locations that they're taking images of and includes sort of articles, games, all kinds of things for you to explore. So we've got, first off, we're set into nature. So we're looking at natural sites we've got here. I think the wildlife of Africa, frozen lakes. I looked at this one, this was really cool. Um, it'll take you on a journey as you explore. So the idea is that it's not just an article with images, it's a um, interactive map that you're moving about and traveling with. So first we're gonna learn about Abraham Lake in Canada. And it'll take us there and jump us into Street View as we had before, where people have taken pictures. And you can see in the bottom left-hand corner, we've got the credit for the person who took the image while visiting. And you can travel around and view it as if you were there yourself. It is very, very cool, especially if it's somewhere you just couldn't possibly travel to at this time, which makes sense. Um, and they give you a bit of information about it. So highly flammable methane, suspended beads of gas, gas beneath people's feet because they're frozen as bubbles. Isn't that cool? That is so cool. So the idea of Google Voyager is that it's teaching you about new locations, something interesting, and then you get to go there and have a look. Um, so it, because we're doing frozen lakes, the theme is next, we have another lake to look at. So we're going to Lake uh, Baikal in Russia. Baikal, so sorry, don't know how to pronounce it. And it'll take you to the next location. Here we go. Very Beautiful, very cool. That is kind of scary to stand on a frozen lake or frozen ocean. Very cool. Well, they're frozen lakes, aren't they? It's a big lake. My goodness, it's a big lake. <laughs> very cool. Anyway, that's me exploring, having fun. But this is another way and you can walk about as well. Same as before. It's not just one or two images you can move about and get a different perspective. Oh, that's so cool. Hello, person. <laughs> And then you can see our mini map here it tells us where we are with a little X symbol. And when we're done with this, we can either just click X to get rid of that little comment card, get the full view, or we can just press back to get back to Voyager. Or at least, I think so. There we go, back to Voyager. So there's plenty to explore here. So you can find the Raptors of Montana. So it's not just natural locations. They've got whole articles, things to view from space, sea levels rising, experiments, whale shark, related paraphernalia. Very cool. There's lots to see. 
oh gosh, I could get lost in this. This is the sort of thing I love looking up and just exploring. It's so much fun. Um, additionally, they have games, games including geography kind of puzzles, puzzles about where to find X, Y, Z, go to this location, go to this location. You even got one on musical instruments. What? What does this mean? I love this. <laughs> so we'll let it load. Ooh. Now it's a quiz. Wow, I have no idea. The modern version of which instrument was marked by a switch to steel strings? Hmm. What is a koto? Modern version of which instrument? Let's say koto. What does it mean? So close, wrong answer. It was, of course, the acoustic guitar. Thank you, everyone at home that knew the answer. I'm so sorry I got it wrong. <laughs> And then it gives you the location. The ins wow, that is quite cool. And then you get to explore the museum. There's lots to see here. I love checking out Voyager, even when I get the questions wrong. It's okay. <laughs> and there's lots of stuff for you know younger kids that maybe like games, something like Carmen San Diego, where you explore um, different locations and learn clues in order to discover new places, things like that. There's a lot to see. I don't want layers. Is. Let's look at layers. Ah, oh, very cool. Different satellite imaging. There's lots to see. Plenty to see. You would never be short of things to explore here. So if you found that maybe you've seen everything you'd want to see by just traveling the globe normally with your own travels. Woohoo. Oh, goodness me. Where are we? Oh, now I'm lost. Everything's oriented strangely. All right, let's make this north up. Oh, I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> Always the risk of a globe spinning. Anyway, that's the earth. We're still there. A few other things to check out. Um, you can hit the dice to find a random location. Ooh, we're going to Serbia. Very cool. Ta -da. And it gives you, again, a little information card that explains what it's talking about, it gives you more information. You can even um, set up a project. This is something a bit more advanced, I'd say. They have tutorials to explain how to do it. Um, but it's essentially setting up a route for you to travel. This is great for if you're planning a trip. You can say, ah, I'm traveling all through Europe. I'd like to go from this place to this place. Let's see what kind of travel we will be doing, what we'll be seeing. You can set up a project that way. It's a lot of fun. Layers includes how you like to view. Pardon me. View your map. So something like um, if you'd like clean, no borders, no clouds, nothing like that. Or if you'd like... Um, borders, roads, things like that to be mentioned. Like here, we've got a border set up like so. And then you can also pop in everything, including landmarks, local areas. There's just a lot to see. Uh, and then turn on animated clouds. I wanna do that. Um, you can also see the last 24 hours of cloud coverage, which I think is very fun. So if you go a bit closer, you can see as time passes, we cycle through the cloud coverage for the last 24 hours. And you can also, with this last setting, oh, let me get rid of this one here. Ta -da. You can also measure distance. So let's say from, whoops, from here, book, east coast, west coast. 3,000 kilometers doesn't sound that far, but maybe it does sound far. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you can measure country distance, the distance between, you know, your home and another place you want to travel to. There's lots to explore. It really doesn't seem like that much. Maybe that is a lot. Anyway, that's my own curiosity that I was just <laughs> thinking, hmm, how wide is Australia? Very cool. I suppose you have to measure from this point more like. And then I suppose if that's an island, that's connected to the mainland. Something like that. About four, 4,000 kilometers. Oh, so cool. Thank you, Dick. That is the general use of the globe as you see it using the Google Chrome version of it. Shall we have a look at what you can get? There's only a few extra differences that you'd find if we're jumping on to our iPad. So let me jump on, just connect it up here. <laughs> Oh, just trying to share here. Here we go. Doing my best. Yes. Just trying to connect to my screen mirroring. 
if it'll let me today. It may not. Let's just give it a second, folks. One moment. Okay, everyone, thank you for waiting. Doesn't look like my iPad wants to respond or at least connect up at least. So what we'll do, we will jump back to the PowerPoint now and we'll keep going. So we've checked out everything that I have on Google Earth, at least on my desktop, on a computer that is. But let me just see if I can probably show you from here. La -la. I can probably show you, let's see, the only extra thing to think of that I wanted to show was that you can quite easily take a snapshot of your location. So say if you want to share this to someone, you just have to click a little phone symbol that's on the left-hand panel. So over here, we've got layers. Under these layers is where we would have our phone symbol. It's very hard to see. There we go, phone symbol. And pressing that will take a picture. Ta -da. And then you have the choice to send it off to whomever or wherever you'd like to save it. So very cool in that sense. The only other thing I can think of is turning on photos. Photos is an option you can do like so. I'll just see if I can do it on mine as well. Photos down here and ta -da! we got all these lovely images that are uploaded by people who visited. Um, generally Google picks the nicest pictures to feature as you can see here. Um, the more we zoom out, the more we'll be able to see or maybe they limit it to your country, you're in visiting that area. Okay, for about here, you can see just about everything. Um, you can see for now, there's nothing directly in Adelaide, but if you zoom closer, it will bring up more and more images, the closer you get. See, more coming up in different suburbs, different cities, different areas. Put the giant lobster there. Big lobster, giant lobster, what do we call it? <laughs> Is it a crayfish? Is it a lobster? I'm going. We must see this. Kirong National Park. Yep. I have to see. I must go visit. Let's go. Do we call it a crab? Do we call it a prawn? What do we call it? Okay. Normally clicking here would give us the picture. Here we go. Ta-da! Very cool. And of course, in the left-hand corner, we're getting the... Uh, name of the person who took the image so everyone is credited they know who took the pictures so cool and from here what i'm reading is maybe the month and then the year this was taken i believe that's what it's sort of referring to oh, that's so nice wow 2013 what will this be okay some camping very cool lots to see here so i'm just gonna escape by going out, pardon me, and let's keep exploring. Yeah, this is a lovely feature. It's a great way to explore right away. You get to see a lot of images at once. It's really cool. Um, you can zoom into somewhere like, we've got Glenelg here, although that's the one in the city. Here we go. This is definitely a Glenelg image. Let's click on that there. Oh, so nice. Very cool. Anyway, this is all I had to show you in terms of pictures. So let's jump back to our PowerPoint and we'll finish up with some Google Arts and Culture. So Google Arts and Culture is owned by Google. Essentially, it's just a way to bring the world's art and culture online for everyone for free. Um, they work with cultural institutions around the world, like a few of these here, like the Van Gogh Museum, MoMA, um, Musée d'Orsay, that sounded so weird when I said it, so sorry. Musée d'Orsay in Paris and many others. This is just a small fraction of what they have. I just took a screenshot of that one there. Um, and they essentially just make art and culture, cultures, cultural phenomena available to everyone online for free. That's the idea. Um, a few cool features I want to point out though with Google Arts and Culture. Um, there are a few fun things you can do. Now I'd love to be able to show you what I've got on my screen, but again, I can't share it right now for some reason. Um, but I will just sort of, you know, show you as I go along. Um, each of there's so much to check out and we'll look at that in just a second. But something to keep in mind is that if you have it on your tablet or on your phone, Google Arts and Culture, again, this is an app that Google has made. You can look it up in the App Store. This is the symbol. That's what it looks like. So Google Arts and Culture on either Google Play or the App Store. Um, or you can just look it up on Chrome like I have as well. So I'll show you that on the website too. Um, but if you're using your phone or a tablet, you have the choice of also doing these cool VR and artistic photos. So art transfer is one that will take a picture you'll take a photo of something you like 
and then you can ch change it to look like a Van Gogh image or a Monet painting um, and it just adds this beautiful filter. It's really, really fun. Um, art selfie, which is very silly, but lots of fun too. Um, you take a picture of yourself and then using an algorithm, it'll figure out what you most look like um, and that being portraiture, paintings, things like that. Um, I generally get men when I take a picture. I take a picture and it goes, ah, you are a, a, a lovely dandy from the year, you know. <laughs> 1700 and something <laughs> and I go yep that's me I look like a man that's fine <laughs> so I think we'll do that in a second because that's really fun um art projector lets you in VR again virtual reality sorry augmented reality is what I mean AR it'll on your screen it'll have your background your actual what you're filming showing so it would be this room for example and then the app will put in place in the world of the virtual world <laughs> It'll put an image up, making it look like you've created your own art gallery in your room and you can travel around and walk around and explore, go up very close, see very fine details. It's very cool. Um, Pocket Gallery, another augmented reality experiment experience. It'll load up a gallery, place it on your table in front of you while you're viewing it through your screen. And then you can travel through and walk through it as if you were actually there, as well as virtual reality tours, which are very much like what you can get on Google Earth, um, where you step inside world-class museums, theatres, amphitheatres, parks, locations like that, um, all through street view technology. So using those 3D cameras again. So that's what Google Arts and Culture does. Shall we have a look at the actual website? Let's go. So let me bring up my website one more time. Interesting. So here we go. Let me just press this here. This is a Google Arts and Culture. If you were to click on Google Arts and Culture off Google, this is what you'd find. Um, first jumps up with today's pick. Every day this updates. I was looking at it a couple of days ago and yes, it is all different again. Scrolling down though, you'll be able to see, and again, it's asking you to get that. There's some extra stuff you can do with it. However, you can have a look through what they're offering for this day. So um, it changes each day, each week, new things will pop up, new articles get, um, more love. They're yet to be represented on the front page, which is where we are now. Um, but it'll always be there just somewhere in the background. So um, today they're exploring 2000 museums, collections, uh, artworks, and famous sites in Street View. So say if we wanted to visit some museums, this is maybe somewhere we'd start. Um, but generally, I'd say if you're just starting out, you're always welcome just to click go um, on any of these. Very exciting. Um, but Explore is probably the place you want to start off with. Explore is going to bring up it, all the new content, everything they've brought in. So they'll start off by showing, okay, would you like to see high definition art? Maybe walk through a gallery. Uh, would you like to try our experiments? Experiments kind of um, mix up as games, um, different ideas, uh, just sort of new stuff to play with. So there's a lot of fun things here, some quizzes, puzzles, a whole bunch of stuff. So I'll go back for now. Um, as fun as that is, that's not what we're here for necessarily. I love it though. Um, art camera. This is something that you probably will be using most often when doing um, or playing with Google Arts and Culture. You think Google Arts and Culture, art galleries. That's kind of the first place your mind may go. <clears throat> but there's a lot to check out. So um, we've got Art Up Close. These things, um, they are essentially um, feature pieces on a piece of art. It's a fully guided tour, fully explained article, highly researched article, and it explains an art piece. So say if we were to pick up the girl, the pearl earring, you just have to scroll through and much like a slideshow, it'll bring up interesting factoids as you scroll through, talking about you know, light quality, color, things like that, and then zooming in. And you know, each time you view one of these, you do find a greater appreciation for what's happening here. My goodness, that is so detailed. I can see the cracks in the paint. Very cool. Wow. Wow. Sorry, this is just very exciting. Um, so that's what we're seeing here. Very cool. Okay, I can't, I can't get distracted. <laughs> Let me go back. So that's just exploring the art pieces in general. So if I go back one more time, here we go. We can check out, you know, you can go through artists, movements, mediums, events, people of historical note. Um, and then you can go into themes and there's just so much to check out. I really, okay, I have to slow down. <laughs> um, something that's very similar to Google Earth are going to be their 360 videos, meaning that you get to experience something in from all angles, as they say here. Uh, so let's say if you want to go through, hmm, 
Wow, space shuttle in virtual reality. Very cool. Let's go into Queen Victoria's, how do you say that? Dubar room in Osborne House. Now it's going to have sounds. I'm going to turn it off for me. It won't have sound for you. So essentially, it's if you've not seen 3D video, it's a oh, pardon me, pre-recorded image video, I should say. As you can see, this gentleman's talking here in the front, probably giving us a guided tour. But you will also notice that we've got these arrows in the corner, which mean that we can navigate around as he's speaking. Um, I've seen this done with theatre productions, actually. They've had a camera set up and then actors will have run around the stage, around the camera, and each time, oh, each time you turn, oh, here he comes, you will, um, that is so cool. Uh, every time you turn, you'll get a new scene or um, a new aspect. So as you can see, he's walking off our screen. So what we'll do, we'll just follow him with our camera by clicking and dragging. <laughs> We're enjoying the gardens, obviously. And we'll take us to the next place, hopefully a room. Ta -da. Here we go. So same thing, we get to explore as if we were there in person. And this can be paused at any time if you'd like to explore further. This is the kind of thing that is just wonderful when you're stuck at home and you want to learn something new or explore somewhere new. Here he is, hello. <laughs> Didn't see you there. Um, and you'll be able to explore you know, the ceiling, the floor. Um, if you look down in 3D camera view, Oh, this is actually quite good. You normally um, have a vanishing point where you can't see where the camera had to finish up and kind of edit. But this is very well done. Wow. Um, it looks gorgeous. And now we're all the way up on a balcony. My goodness, where are we? Very cool. Again, so much to see on Google Arts and Culture. Let's jump onto a few of the fun things you can do with an iPad or an iPhone or your phone in general. My goodness, I just want to hang out here. This is so cool. Wow. Oh, and they have a few animated things too that come up as well. Very cool. Anyway, <laughs> enough just being very excited about everything. So that's Google Arts and Culture. It's great fun. Let me have a quick look at our iPad screen here. So what I'll do, I'll open up a larger screen for us. So here's myself. Hello, back again. So what I've done, I'm on the website. Sorry, I'm on the app. Um, so same view as what we saw before, just in an app form, da -da, like so. And at the bottom here, shoop, we have an image that lets us whoop, press into and start using our camera. So I bring that up. It comes up with five options, all that I've brought up before, including color palette, which I didn't have on there. Let's do say art selfie. Art selfie is lots of fun. You take a picture of yourself. Like so. Got my picture there. And now it's loading to decide who I may look like. Yeah. <laughs> So I look 62% like John Varley. This uh, painting was by, is it John Varley or painted by John Linda? Anyway, it was a painting in 1880 or so, 1882. This is the gentleman here and I look just like him. The, likely, like, the, the likeness is a bit much. It's a bit uncanny. Uh, <laughs> I'm not mad though. It's doing its job. It looks good. Here's another one. And it's a woman this time. Thank goodness. There she is. We do look quite similar, I must say. She definitely has the red hair. Very cool. So this is quite fun. Um, nothing more to go into after that, but say you think, ah, oh, this she looks like me. Sort of, sort of. We can click on the image itself and it brings up more detail about the image. It's a lot of fun, um, especially if you're, you know, showing this to someone who maybe isn't that interested in art or, you know, cultural movements, you go, try this art selfie. It's a lot of fun. Um, pocket gallery is very, very cool. I'll just see if I can bring one up. Making it in an easy way. So what it's doing, it's trying to find a place to pop the gallery and then put it in augmented reality. Maybe I'll save that for another time. Um, another one to try is art transfer. So if I took a picture right now, it's going to be my own face. There I am. And now you can, so we've got my photo myself frozen in time and you can choose a style to put it in. So I'll just see if we've got, here we go. We've got a Van Gogh style. I'll just see if this loads through. Ooh, freaky. It's essentially overlaid. Yeah. Isn't that cool? Overlaid my face with um, images of the irises that Van Gogh had painted and cleverly, cleverly put it into an art style. So say if I did a uh, Wuha 
Edward Munch. So sorry, Edward. Um, I thought it was a muha. I'm so wrong. Um, the Scream, very classic painting. And then it puts it in. Isn't that just the coolest thing? Um, and it's all just using, you know, clever technology. If I retook that. Oh, gosh, it can be a GIF as well. Wow. Let's do an Andy Warhol pop art style. Let's see how my face would look like if we did it in pop art. <laughs> that is really cool. And because it's all sort of um, artificial intelligently designed, each picture is going to look different. That's really cool. It's really weird. Like I look scary, but that is very cool. Let's do another Van Gogh or Van Gogh, depending on who's asking, who's pronouncing it. Ah, oh, yes. How oh, lovely. There's a likeness there. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And if we did say the great wave of Kanagawa, which is you know, the great wave image. Wow. That is cool. It's not, a, obviously there's my face in the middle. So it's not going to be an actual replication, but it's got all the detail that is so similar to the original image. Wow. I'm impressed. Consider me impressed. I love this sort of stuff. So cool. Wow. Just like, that's cool. That's just heaps of fun. So everything you can get on uh, the computer version of Google Arts and Culture, you can also get on your device to scroll through. You'll learn something. I promise. I always pick up something every time I flick through here, have a read, explore. There's always something to see and I love using it. It's a lot of fun. So every time I get the opportunity to offer it to people and show it off, I do because it's so much fun. So what we'll do, we'll just finish off with a little outro, I think. There we go. Here we go. All done for the day. And I'll pause now for questions. Um, thank you everyone for listening. And I'll just pause right now. If you've got a question, pop it in the chat and I'll answer them in just a second. Thanks guys. Be right back. Excellent. Thanks for the questions guys. Let's finish up for the day. We're all done. We just have to say how to get connected again. So stay connected with us by following us our Facebook page or our Instagram at, at City of Marion Libraries. Check out our Watson page on the City of Marion Council website. Subscribe to our library loop, loop newsletter, which you can do through the catalogue. Or visit a branch or call us on 83756755 and say hello. That's all from me today, everyone. I hope you've had a lovely time learning and having fun on Google Earth and Google Arts and Culture. It's always a joy for me to explore those again. I love bringing them up. So I'll see you all the next one. Have a lovely afternoon and happy learning. See you next time. Bye. <laughs>